Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jacob6875 here to show you the new talents and glyphs that Shaman, well that's achievements, Shaman gets in the Mists of Pandara, Pandaria Beta at the current moment. So let's look at glyphs since I don't think everyone's seen them. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen talents. And for the glyphs, they've got rid of the top tier of glyphs. Now there's only major and minor glyphs. There's no like prime ones anymore. So they basically reduce the amount of glyphs you can have by like three, I guess. But basically what they did is they kept minor glyphs exactly the same, at least for shamans, and seem to have lumped everything else together in uh, major glyphs are called now. Which is kind of odd to me, but yeah, it makes the choices I mean, a lot of these choices don't even seem very good. It's, it seems to be almost better to have no glyphs than actually have glyphs. So, so anyway, let's uh, look at them one by one here. Pretty much going to focus on the Elemental and Resto ones, because I really have no idea about Elemental, because I haven't played it since Burning Crusade. So we got Glyphic Capacitor Totem, which reduces the charging time by two seconds. Capacitor Totem right here, basically, it explodes. It has a 45... It's, it was like, it's like the old Fire Nova Totem, basically. And this just makes it explode faster. I don't know when that would be useful, really. Glyph of, Ch Glyph of Chain Heal. Increase healing done by Chain Heal target target. This is exactly the same as the old one. So you're probably only going to pick that up if you're a healer, I would assume. Chain Lightning. This is exactly the same as the current Chain Lightning Glyph. But you're, so you're basically going to want to pick this up if you AoE more than three targets, I guess. Then you have Glyph of Chaining. Doubles the jump distance of your chain heal, but reduces its healing done by 15%. So this is one of those new glyphs they're adding that could be good or could be bad, depending on the fight. You're going to be doing a lot of switching out on uh, fights in the in Miss of Pandaria. Because, like, I mean, there's some fights, I mean, even in, like, Dragon Soul, there's some fights where you're all spread out, so you're going to want this glyph over, like, the boat, for example. If you do like the 10 man if you, and you chain heal, you might only hit one or two people because people are so spread out. But with this, you might want to use this glyph for that fight so you can actually hit everyone. And any fight where people have to sp spread out, be 10 yards apart, this glyph you're going to want to use for healing. Next you have uh, Glyph of Cleansing Waters, which seems to work exactly like the old... Well, I guess it's... 4% of your maximum health, not the targets, so... Yeah, it works just like the old talent did, in case you missed that talent. I guess this would be good on Dispel Heavy Fights. And, um, just so you know, both Elemental and, uh... Resto, at least, get Cleanse Spirit as standard. See, there you can see it on my bar right there, I'm Elemental. So yeah, you can Dispel as Elemental now. I guess. Well, just Curses. Uh, then you get Feral Spirit. Well, that's some enhanced thing. Then you have Glyph of Fire em Elemental, which reduces the duration and cooldown by 40%. I guess Blizzard finally listened with all the problems fi the totems had with uh, being like a 10-minute cooldown. Well, they're 5-minute base now, but the problem used to be that they had such a long cooldown that you could never use it. Like, if you're doing multiple attempts on a boss, it'd only be up for like 1 out of every three attempts or something, which was really annoying when you're doing, like, progression rating. Uh, Fire Nova increase the radius of your Fire Nova spell by five yards. Not too amazing there. Increase the duration of your... F See, this is one of the new glyphs. I don't even know if it's worth to put in. Increase the duration by 25% reduces the initial damage dealt by 25%. So I guess maybe in rating that'd be good, but, I mean, you have to look at the math on it. It's, someone needs to figure out if that's even... If you should take that or not. Increase duration of Frost Shock by two seconds. Not that great of a glyph. Ghost Wolf. Uh, you are less hindered by effects that will reduce movement speed. So I guess this turns Ghost Wolf into travel form. Which I think would be pretty amazing for PvP. So yeah, if you want to be a druid, there you go. Oh, also, uh, Instant Ghost Wolf is standard now. There's no talent for it. Because, yeah, I'll show you talents in a minute. Glyph of Grounding Totem. It reflects a spell back at, a, at the caster, but it also increases the cooldown by 35 seconds. So I don't know if that'd be good. 
Because that'd be like a 1.5 minute cooldown on your grounding totem almost. But it would reflect a spell back, so... I don't know. I, I guess that could be good for PvP in some situations, but otherwise it wouldn't be. That's some um, enhanced thing, which I have no idea what it's talking about there. Healing Stream Totem. When you heal a stream totem, it heals an ally. It also reduces their fire, frost, and nature damage taken by 10% for 6 seconds. Uh, okay. I guess that could be good in fights where there's a lot of that type of damage. Here's Healing Stream Totem right here. See, it has a 30 second cooldown and lasts for 15 seconds, so I guess you gotta keep putting it down over and over. Which, that could be incredibly annoying. But I guess on fights where there's a lot of magic damage, that would be a pretty good glyph to have. As I said, you're gonna be switching glyphs a lot. Glyph of Healing Wave, exactly the same as it is now, I think. Yep. Same as it is now. Pretty subpar glyph, to be honest. Hex, this is the exact same as it is on live right now. We're just cool down by 10 seconds. Honestly, I hate Hex's cooldown. 45 seconds. That's ridiculous for a CC ability. Glyph of Lava Burst. Here's one of those pro and cons. Your Lava Burst will always be a critical strike, even if you don't have Flame Shock on the target, but it does 5% less damage. So this, I think, would be more of a PvP talent because you're going to want to keep Flame Shock up in a PvE just to reset the cooldown on Lava Burst, so you're never going to be in a situation where Flame Shock's not on the target, so I don't think you'd get this glyph. But in PvP, you might not always be able to put Flame Shock on the target, so you can just have crits whenever you want, which, yeah, so that seems to be more of a PvP talent to me. Unless the math works out where it's better to not, well, no, because, yeah, Flame Shock resets the cooldown of it, so you're going to want to always keep Flame Shock up, so, yeah. What's Purge do? Purge dispels one additional magic effect. I guess... PvP oriented ability, but it doesn't seem that good to me. This one's interesting. Your Riptide no longer has a cooldown, but it also no, no longer instantly heals a targeted ally. So, basically, you don't have a cooldown on Riptide anymore, but it has a cast time. Which I think would be a good PvE talent. Because you're not moving in PvE, so if it's a 1.5 second cast, it'd be the same as having it instant because of the global cooldown. Even a two second cast with haste, you'd get it down short enough or it wouldn't matter. So that's a really good PvE talent. So you can just cast rip time whenever you want. For PvP though, that would suck. Uh Spirit Walker Graves, increase the duration by five seconds. Not spectacular, but where's Spirit Walker's Grace on my bar? There it is. Same the same as on live, last fifteen seconds. Trillic Currents. So Trillic Currents is no longer standard. It's going to be a glyph. As I said, you're going to have to like choose between your glyphs. Really hard choices for PvE. It's going to reduce the damage dealt by Lightning Bolt with 30%, but you get mana back. So this is going to be for Resto in order to get mana back on fights you need it. So one of your glyph slots is always going to be taken up by uh, probably this, because you're going to need it. Actually, I have really no idea. Who knows what rating in the end of... MOP is going to be like. Glyph of Thunder. Reduce the cooldown of Thunderstorm by 10 seconds. Same as it is on live. Not too impressive. I guess PvP ability. Tomatic Recall. Gives you more man... This talent or glyph seems absolutely terrible right now because... Pretty much all totems last like 10 seconds now. So when are you going to put down a 10 second totem and then recall it again? That just seems pointless. Gives your totems 10% more health. Eh... PvP ability, I guess. Here's another one of those pro and con ones. You can this lets you cast lightning bolt like while you're moving, but your lightning bolt spell also takes five percent longer to cast. So again, this is more of a talent that you might or a glyph you might not even want to have in PvE, depending on the fight. Like if you're doing Ultraxian, you don't want to have this glyph in. So it almost seems better to some fights in PvE to like not have any glyphs at all as an elemental shaman, which is kind of weird because. You're not going to want this glyph as an elemental shaman in PvE. That one's debatable. It could be good or bad. The mask's going to have to figure it out. Pro this is probably going to be a pro, so every shaman will have that one. But like Unleash Lightning, it's like, well, no, that could be... Because right now there's no penalty for having it. Except you lose like 4% damage on Lightning Bolt, I guess, if you take that glyph out to put this in on live. But, yeah... I mean, it's just going to be 
debatable. Which I guess is what they were going for. Here's Glyph of Water Shield. Increases your re mana regeneration by 10%, but Water Shield no longer activates when you receive damage. This seems pretty terrible to me, because there's quite a few fights where... It just doesn't seem like worth using a Glyph slot for this. I mean, 10% mana on Water Shield, it's not even that good. Of course, I can't... Let's see if I can actually 407 mana per 5 seconds at 85 anyway. So 10% is what? 47 MP5? Uh, yeah. Plus you'll lose it triggering. So yeah, I don't know if that would be worth it. Then you got Wind Shear, which is your uh, Interrupt, which increases the school's duration by one second, but also increases the cooldown by three seconds. Eh. Not sure if that'd be good or bad. It'd be okay, I guess. Then you're in Mining Glyphs, which are pretty much the same as we have now. You have Arctic Wolf, Astro Recall, cuts the cooldown in half. Earth Shield's kind of interesting and weird. Earth Shield char charges are no longer depleted when taking damage, but your Earth Shield duration is reduced to 45 seconds. So, I guess this is trying to be a PvP talent, but with the change, you have to dispel every single charge of Earth Shield to get rid of it now. I don't think you'd want to take this talent. Because you'd have to recast it every 45 seconds. But then again, I guess it could be good for PvP. You have a lightning shield. This is, yeah, this is what you're going to have this. You're going to want to have this glyph as um, elemental. Probably as enhancement too. Actually, it's all specs because all the glyphs suck mostly. Yeah, that's the same as is now. Reincarnation spell no longer needs a reagent. Glyph of thunderstorm. This is the same as it is on live, I think. Basically, makes it so you can't get not knocked back anymore if that bothers your raid leader. And this is a pure PvP talent. Basically, whenever you put a totem down, you put down four totems instead of just one. So I guess it would confuse people in PvP, or that's the goal. In order to uh, prevent them from just killing your single totem you put down. So that's a pretty cool talent right there. Then moving on to talents, which are the same between all the specs. This is the same talent tree window that you're going to get. See, Resto, Elemental, that from whatever spec you have. Uh, for, uh, level, and then these are the levels around here on the left, where you get, uh, the talents. Level 15. And these are the ones I selected right here. I just randomly picked, or not randomly, but just thought, oh, that seems good. I have no, really have no idea which one's better or not. So, for, uh, for your first tier at level 15, you get Nature's Guardian, which pretty much works as it does now on live. So, I picked that one because it seems better than the other two, honestly. And you have Stone Bulwark Totem, which summons a totem that, you know, puts a shield on the caster, which basically we have now in the form of a glyph on live with, uh, whatever that one totem is, I forget. But yeah, I didn't think it was very good. I'd rather have Nature's Guardian to automatically do it than have to remember to summon a totem, plus the cooldown's twice as long. And you have Astral Shift, which reduces your damage by 40%. Reducing damage taken by 40% for 6 seconds. This finally here gives Shaman an ability to like reduce their damage taken for like on Altraxian or something. If you need to stay out, you can actually pop this now and not die. Unlike now where Shamans really have no ability to do this. Like almost every other class does. So You might be taking this talent on like Altraxian or something. But I just prefer... To have Nature's Guardian where it just automatically does it every time your health gets low. Especially for leveling. Then at level 30 you get... Uh, you have a choice between Frozen Power which gives your Frost Shock basically... Roots the target there for 5 seconds which seems pretty good for PvP. You have Earth Grab Totem which uh, changes... Basically changes your talent here to... Uh, or your... What is it? Earth Bind Totem to Earth Grab Totem. So instead of slowing targets it roots them in place. And then you have Windwalk Totem, which summons a totem that uh, pushes people away. Wait, what's it do? Oh, never mind. That's a different tree. It makes everyone immune to movement impaired effects. So it has like the exact opposite. So I went. Uh, none of these are really good for PvP or E. So I just went for Earth Grab because I get into a situation where, while leveling, while I have to run away, I just put that down and it roots everyone, which is pretty cool. So then for a level. Uh, 45, you have a choice between Call of the Elements, which basically is like preparation for rogues. 
it uh, reduces the cooldown of all your total to it resets the cooldown of all your totems that have a base cooldown shorter than five minutes but it has an eight minute cooldown itself so basically like preparation for shamans I don't think it's that great to be honest except for maybe PvP because you could pop that pop all your totems and use that in arenas and do them all again and you have tomatic restoration if you destroy a totem or it gets destroyed like your fire elemental gets destroyed it reduces the cooldown on the totem by the duration so if you say you put down a fire elemental totem and it gets destroyed instantly by the boss it reduces the cooldown of you have remaining on it by two minutes so that's pretty cool i guess and you have tomatic projection where you can relocate all your totems to a different area I don't think this is very good, especially since most totems now last like 10 seconds to 30 seconds, so I don't know why you'd need this. The only benefit would be to move like fire elemental totem on a specific fights where you have a lot of movement, but I don't know, I just don't think that's a very good talent. None of these talents are really amazing to me, to be honest. Call of Elements might be better. I might switch to that if it works on fire elemental totem. It's, he says... Base cooldown shorter than 5 minutes. Fire Elemental Totem is 5 minutes, so I don't think it'll work on it, which is why I haven't got it. Then at level 60, you start getting the exciting talents. Remember, you can have these as any spec, so if you want Elemental Mastery as a um, Resto Shaman, you can have it. So basically what Elemental Mastery does now, 2 minute cooldown, it redu increases your haste by 30% for 20 seconds. Which is pretty good in PvE or PvP for a shaman to have like a personal bloodlust on a two minute cooldown. It's basically what it's basically what the uh, spec um, the tier thirteen or whatever the Dragon Soul tier is for Arresto shamans. That's like the same thing pretty much. Um, then you have or you have a choice from Astral Swiftness, which might prove to be the best in PvE. It basically gives you nature swiftness swiftness on a one minute cooldown, but it also increases your base haste by five percent at all times. So some people with who are s smarter than at math than me, you're gonna have to work out which is a better, uh, higher damage over time on like a boss fight. But then you get it's even more complicated because you get this, which I picked. When one of your spells causes causes direct damage or healing, you have a chance to gain Echo of the Elements, duplicating the spell's effect. This means that as elemental, if you shoot a lightning bolt, you can get like three additional lightning bolts because you have that one talent to proc an additional one. Then this talent could proc off both of them, getting you four lightning bolts off like, you know, one cast. As healing, though, this might not be that amazing because if you're healing someone to full and they get another additional heal on them, that it's just all overheal. It doesn't matter. But then again, if this works on like chain heal and uh, healing rain, it could be a lot better than these two talents. It's going to have to see in practice which one is best. I would think probably this one is probably going to be best for uh, Elemental, depending on how much it procs, of course. Then at level 75, Shamans get a choice between Healing Tide Totem, which seems more like basically what a lot of classes have now, like Tranquility or something, which is pretty cool because we finally get one. So it has 3-minute cooldown. It's basically like Tranquility for rest I think a lot of resto shamans are gonna want to get that or even a uh, non resto shamans on fights that require a lot of healing and you have ast astral guidance when you deal direct damage or healing for the next 10 seconds 40 percent of the amount is copied to healing I don't know I picked this one because this would be pretty good too besides healing tide totem if there's a high damage area as an elemental shaman you can help out with healing by popping that in Continuing to do a lot of damage, and because I mean, if I crit for, I crit for like 45k now. What's 40% of that? I mean, 10% be 4,000, so I'd be like 16, 20,000. 16,000 would be healing someone. And if I crit for that a lot, that's a lot of healing going out, and only a two-minute cooldown. Definitely help out, help out the healers with that spell. Then you have conduct conductivity when you cast healing wave greater healing wave healing surge or lightning bolt on a target located within your healing rain allies standing within the healing rain share healing you go to 27 initial damage or healing done this seems like only for resto shaman because why would i be putting down healing rain as elemental 
elemental or enhancement. I mean, this could be good. I mean, so basically, if everyone's standing in your healing rain and you heal with a greater heal, everyone inside the healing rain gets 20% of that healing. That'd be pretty good as a resto shaman. Definitely on fights like Ultraxia where everyone's standing in the healing rain the entire freaking fight. So I might pick that up as resto. But healing tide, that's going to be a tough choice, honestly. I guess it's just if you want, if there's fights with ton of burst healing, you might go healing tide totem for them or burst conductivity for like normal fights. It's going to be a lot of very tough choices in the talent trees and they're all going to be tailored for specific fights, which is I guess what Blizzard wanted to do. For uh, Then you have level 90, which, well, that's very confusing. Basically it buffs all of your weapon imbues, it looks like. For our Earth Living... It increases, oh yeah, it basically makes your uh, Unleashed Elements better. Which, who knows if that's very good. Most of these don't seem that good, because I know on currently on live, you never really use them. Like, you don't use Unleashed Elements pretty much ever, as Resto or Elemental, because it's not very good. So I don't know about that talent. Basically just buffs them all, it looks like. Slightly. I don't think that's very good. Then you get, this is at level 90 by the way, so you can't even level this far on beta to test them out. Prime Elementalist is your other choice. Earth and Fire Elemental Totems draw forth powerful primal elements directly from the elemental planes. These servitors are 50% more powerful, awesome, and act as pets directly under your control and gain additional abilities. See, this is a talent, I mean, why would you pick this crappy talent over having a permanent pet at all times? I mean, even if you're Restoration, having a permanent Fire ele Elemental pet is going to help the group's DPS by quite a bit. I mean, this could turn Resto Shamans into one of the best healers on Heroic modes, because they'll be able to do a lot of damage with their Fire Elemental pets totems out, and this won't detract from your healing at all. So that would, could be pretty cool. And your final choice is Elemental Blast, which is a 12 second cooldown. Harness of Direct and... Harness and direct the raw power of the elements towards an enemy target, dealing 23,518 damage and increasing the t caster's critical strike, haste, or mastery by 5% for 8 seconds. So if it's an enemy target, this is completely useless for resto, I guess. This could be better as elemental, because it increases your... Hmm, 1.5 second cast. I don't know, this could be good for our uh, element. It just depends on how, the, how good these pets are. I still think having a pet's cooler, but that's just me. And these are permanent pets, remember, and they're 50% more powerful. Like, on live right now, I can do, like, 4 or 5k DPS during, like, Heroic Ultraxian as my Resto Shaman. With my Fire Elemental and, uh, like, Searing Totem out the whole fight. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh... Finally here, I want to show you some of the new effects. Most of them aren't in the game yet. See, here's uh, Astral Guidance, which I picked up, which doesn't really do anything. See, it doesn't do anything. Uh, what else can I... Oh, then here's your totem. Here's Capacitor Totem. Basically just blows up. Boom. And I'm cowering in fear from it, apparently. Grounding Totem. Exact same. Stormlash Totem. As you can see, all have really low cooldowns. Like, this increases the damage from all party members, but it only lasts like 10 seconds. And then it goes away. Earth to Here's Earth Grab Totem that I specced into. Not too exciting. Tremor Totem. Here's Earth Elemental. And he looks the same. Water Totems. Mana Totem's gone, apparently. Was he following me? Leave me alone! He's following me! That's cool, I guess. He actually follows you. Alright, go away, Earth Elemental. Got your Healing Stream Totem. Heals for 3,000. I guess Blizzard added commas to scrolling combat text. So this last 15 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. So I guess you can help out in all situations where there's a lot of healing. Got your Fire Elemental. Uh, he follows you too. Oh my gosh, I'm being stalked. 
Got your magma totem. Seems to do have a lot better AOE graphic than it used to. And you got Searing Totem. Pretty standard. And you got your different weapon imbues, of course, which pretty much do the same thing. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it about the new Shaman. These are the standard spells you get when you at the levels. Pretty much the same stuff you'd spec into now, basically. They could just give you the talents for you. So anyway, I hope that information was uh, helpful. This has been uh, Jacob6875, and uh, thanks for watching.